This video will review how to solve linear systems using the substitution method. To use the substitution method, we're going to replace one variable with an equivalent expression containing the other variable. For instance, we can take an equation where you have y equals, take the value that is on the right hand side of it, and replace it into another equation where y is. Or if we have an x equals, we can take that expression and substitute it into the other equation where x is. This makes it a one variable equation. When you have it to where it's one variable in one equation, you can solve it and get a constant as an answer. For example, if I have y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals negative 2x minus 9, I can use substitution to solve this equation. I can rewrite it as, an, as one equation that has one variable. In order to do this, I can substitute the 2x plus 3 in place of y in the second equation. If 2x plus 3 is equal to y, I can replace y in the second equation. I'm taking the 2x plus 3 and putting it on the other equation. Therefore, I get 2x plus 3 equals, and on the other side, the negative 2x minus 9. This is now down to a single variable equation, x's. In order to solve it, I'm going to solve for x. To do this, I'll add 2x to both sides, and I'll get 4x plus 3 equals negative 9. I'll then subtract 3 from both sides and get 4x equals negative 12. Dividing both sides by 4, I get x equals negative 3. Now notice the original problem had x's and y's. This means that I need to get a solution that is a point. That means both x's and y's are my answers. Right now I don't have that. All I know is that the lines will intersect when x equals negative 3. I don't know what value of y would be, or what y, value of y we would have when both equations are equal. In order to find that value of y, I need to substitute x equals negative 3 into either equation. You pick whatever equation looks easier, and that's the one you use. They'll both work, they'll both give you the same value of y, it's up to you which equation you pick. Now if it was up to me, I'd pick the top equation because it's all positive. If I use the one that's all positive, I have less chance that I'm um, probably going to mess it up. So in this case, I'll say that given the equation y equals 2x plus 3, if I substitute in that I know x equals negative 3, I get this, y equals 2 times negative 3 plus 3. I'll solve for y by taking 2 and multiplying by negative 3, which is negative 6, and then adding 3 to it. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. I now know that y equals negative 3. As we wrote in the purple up above in the reminders, we need to remember that the solution must be a coordinate. So therefore we'll write the solution as the point negative 3, negative 3. x goes first and y goes second. Now remember, this answer is the point of intersection. The whole point for solving a linear system is to find that point of intersection. That is the point where the two lines would uh, cross. Now let's look at another example. Here we have y equals 2x plus 4 and x plus y equals 16. The question I have to you is do we really need to have both equations in slope intercept form? That is, do both equations have to say y equals? Now it wouldn't be too tough to make the bottom equation in the form y equals mx plus b. However, we really don't have to do that. Provided you have one equation that says y equals or one equation that says x equals, we can still use substitution. And we'll look at how to use that approach for this problem. To use substitution, again, we're replacing one variable with an equivalent expression, trying to make it a single variable equation. So in this case, I can take the 2x plus 4 and put it into the other equation where y is. If you have an equation where y is by itself, when you replace it, you're replacing that variable. So in this case, the 2x plus 4 is going where y is. That means in the bottom equation, I still have x plus, but now the 2x plus 4 put in parentheses and then equals what was already there, the 16. Now when you replace it, you want to put it in parentheses. This time it's not going to matter because it's just x plus y, it's a 1y. There's nothing to distribute. But if it was x plus 2y or x plus 3y or even x minus y, you would have distribution to do. And without the parentheses, it would be wrong. In this case, because it's just a plus sign in front of the parentheses, there's nothing to distribute. So what I have now is x plus 2x plus 4 equals 16. I'm going to solve my equation for x by combining like terms. x plus 2x is 3x, plus 4 equals 16, subtract 4 from both sides, and then divide by 3. Doing this, I'll get x equals 4. Now again, we, like the previous problem, we need to remember that we're trying to find the solution that contains both x and y's. It's the point, the point of intersection. In this case, we only know that x is 4, so I need to pick an equation that I think is easy to use in order to find y. Now if I want y, I probably want the equation that says y equals meaning I want the top equation. 
I'll substitute 4 in for the x, and then I'll work it out. 2 times 4 is 8, 8 plus 4 is 12, and now I know that y is 12. Had I used the other equation, I would have got the same answer. Had I put x as 4, I would have then had to subtract 4 from both sides. 16 minus 4 would also be um, 12. I would get the same answer. Again, I would get y equals 12. It doesn't matter which equation you pick, they both give you the same answer. This is the one and only time that that works. Lastly, I need to make sure I get my answer in coordinate form. I want the point of intersection. So the coordinate form, or the point form for this, would be the coordinate 4, 12. Now I'm going to put a couple more problems up. And this time I want you to pause the computer, work the problems out, and then check your answers. Please spend the time to work the problems out ahead of time. Don't just watch the answers. It's not the same. I'm going to wait a moment for you to pause it. When you've worked them out, restart it and check your answers. All right, hopefully you've worked these out. In the first problem, I see that they're both y equals. If they're both in slope-intercept form, I can just take the 4x minus 1 and make it equal to the 2x plus 7. Now, it doesn't matter which one's on the left and which is on the right. You can also say 2x plus 7 can be substituted in the first equation, in which case you'd have 2x plus 7 equals 4x minus 1. Again, the side doesn't matter which is which. So to do this, I get 4x minus 1 equals the 2x plus 7. This is a single variable equation, all I have are x's. So if I subtract 2x from both sides, I get 2x minus 1 equals 7. Add 1 to both sides, 2x equals 8. Divide by 2, and x equals 4. Now this isn't the whole solution. The problem has x's and y's to start with, which means we need both x and y's in the answer. We're going to substitute y equals 4 into whatever equation we feel is easier. I think the bottom equation is a little bit easier. Therefore, I'm going to say that y equals 2 times 4 plus 7. 2 times 4 is 8, and 8 plus 7 is 15. My solution must be a coordinate because it's a point of intersection. Therefore, the solution is the point 4, 15. In problem 2, we don't have any y equals. Instead, we have up top an x equals 2y minus 7. In this case, I'm going to take the 2y minus 7 and put it in the second equation where x is. When you substitute, put it in parentheses. And this time it won't matter because you have a 2x, meaning when you substitute, you're going to have 2 times the quantity, 2y minus 7, and then the plus 4y equals 10. Because it is a 2 that's in front of the parentheses, we need to distribute. 2 times 2y is 4y, and 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. Next step is we'll combine like terms. 4y and 4y is 8y, minus the 14 equals 10. To isolate the variable, we'll add 14 to both sides. 8y equals 24, and lastly divide by 8 y equals 3. Knowing that y equals 3 is half the answer, I now need to go back and find x this time. I have the top equation which has x equals by itself, and this will be the easier equation to use. Again, you can use either equation, but the top one will be easier here. If we take the top equation and substitute y equals 3, we get x equals 2 times 3 minus 7. 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 minus 7 is negative 1. The point of intersection here would be the coordinate negative 1, 3. For the last equation, we both have y equals on both of them. So again, we can substitute and say that 5x minus 8 equals the 6 plus 5x. Or we can say 6 plus 5x equals the 5x minus 8. It's up to you. Putting the two equations together, I get this. I need to isolate my variables, which means I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. But I see that 5x is on both sides this time. So when I subtract 5x from both sides, they both cancel. This leaves me negative 8 equals 6. Well, negative 8 is not equal to 6, and I don't have a variable anymore, so I'm going to cross that off and say negative 8 is not 6. This is one of the special cases. If you have the variables cancel, and what's left is not a true statement, this is a no solution. The reason we call this a no solution is the equations y equals 5x minus 8 and y equals 6 plus 5x are parallel lines. They both have a slope of 5, and they have different y-intercepts. If the lines are parallel and have different y-intercepts, they never intersect. If they never intersect or cross, there can't be a point of intersection. Lines that do not cross are parallel and therefore have no solution. If, on the other hand, the x's cancel and what's left is a true statement, in which case you get 6 equals 6 or negative 8 equals negative 8, that would be an infinite solution. That would mean that the lines are exactly the same equation, and because the lines have the same equation, they coincide. That means one line is exactly on top of the other. Therefore, every point on the lines are solutions, and you'd have an infinite number of them. I hope this video helps you to solve linear systems using substitution method, and thank you for watching. 
You may want to also look at solving linear systems using elimination method, as that is another method for solving these problems. Again, thank you for watching.